we're talking about this early NBA season, guys, a lot of the headlines have been dominated by two guys who do not currently play for the teams that they are signed to play for. That would be one, Kyrie Irving of the Brooklyn Nets, and two, Ben Simmons of the Philadelphia 76ers. Now, I don't know if anybody saw this, but yesterday before the Nets' home opener, which they lost to the Charlotte Hornets without Kyrie, who has decided to stay away from the team and not participate because he does not have a COVID-19 vaccine and says he is being a voice for the voiceless. If you want to know how I feel about that, you can check out one of our recent episodes of the Ain't Hard to Tell podcast because I don't think Kyrie's really being a voice at all. However, outside the Barclays Center yesterday, there were people protesting. Protesting for the fact that Kyrie Irving cannot play right now. Fans outside chanting, let him play. Whew. I don't even know where to begin on this. First of all, Kyrie could play and be part of a team and do the right thing and protect himself and his teammates and his family and all this stuff. But he's choosing not to do that. And we don't even have to get into why he's choosing not to do that. Because quite frankly, we still kind of don't know why he is doing this. But there are people out there outside the Barclays Center yesterday and actually tried to storm inside the Barclays Center and put a lot of those security folks, that good security folks that work at the Barclays Center at risk and in a position most of them didn't even imagine they would be in when they got up and went to the Barclays Center to work yesterday afternoon. They didn't think they were going to deal with this. And I asked the people who were outside there at the Barclays Center, what are you protesting for? The chance of let Kyrie play? Kyrie's not thinking about you. Kyrie's not out here doing this for you. And see, here's what's interesting. The voice of the voiceless, and many, this is the statement by Kyrie said on his IG Live, many people have interpreted the voiceless as being those who are anti-vax. And I have said that the folks who are anti-vax have had a pretty loud voice in this. Right? They, they're major, a minority of the people, a loud minority of the people, but they've had a pretty loud voice in this. Don't think they're voiceless at all. But these are folks outside the Barclays Center yesterday who are protesting for a multi-million dollar athlete who refuses to currently be a part of his team. Like I said, he doesn't care about you. You're out here protesting for him. He doesn't even know who you are. You're out here protesting for him, for this, to let Kyrie play? Kyrie could play. It's really simple. All he's got to do is take the vaccine and do the right thing. But Kyrie's refusal to play, along with his Instagram Live about a week ago, which made no sense. Now, as people out here empowered and emboldened to go outside the Barclays Center, where they have to put up barricades because they're chanting in his name to let him play because they want vaccine mandates in New York to end. Yeah, this, this, this is where they are. Now, of course, how that affects the team on the basketball court, the Nets, they are one and two. They had a fantastic comeback win against the Philadelphia 76ers on Friday night. This was following their opening night loss to the Milwaukee Bucks. And then they come home and they lose to the Charlotte Hornets. Do the Nets miss Kyrie? Yeah, I think so. They definitely do miss Kyrie. Do I still think they're talented enough and can figure things out and get things right and still win the NBA championship? Of course. But they miss Kyrie. Let's make no joke about this. They are going to miss Kyrie and the impact of Kyrie for sure. How that shakes out. When we will see Kyrie, who knows? If you watched our opening night special with myself, Brian Fonseca, Jamal Murphy, and Gerard Hector, we all talked about this. Are the Nets going to have to set a deadline? When is that deadline? When is it appropriate for Kyrie to come back? And the teammates feel like he's still a part of this team because he's going to have some explaining to do when he comes back. It's not like Kyrie can just come back and be like, okay, guys, now I'm back. And when is it at the point where it's not cool anymore? The longer this goes on, as Murph said on that show, the less likely I think his teammates are going to be willing to have him back with open arms on this team, particularly Kevin Durant and James Harden. I don't think they're really going to be here for the BS much longer. Either you're in or you're out. Speaking of out, Ben Simmons, still out for the 76ers, still not playing. We saw all that drama unfold last week. Ben Simmons refusing to enter a team drill. The Doc Rivers asked him to get into, showed up to practice with sweats, apparently had his cell phone in his pocket. Then Darren Morey gets on the radio down in Philly and talks about how this is going to be a long process. Like that word, right, Sixers fans, process. 
this is what we're going to do. It might take four years. To which I had to laugh. Like, come on. This, this, we know this ain't taking four years. Like, this is not happening. We're not doing this for four years. But this situation has gotten ugly. Let's just call it for what it is. Ben Simmons doesn't want to play for the team. Sixers fans don't want to see him. I know this. I've spoken to some Sixers fans. Some couple friends who were Sixers fans. They don't want to see this guy anywhere near the team. They want him gone like yesterday. But Dow Morey is trying to get the best deal that he can get. Now, where... I think Dal Morey potentially could be going wrong with this. I understand he doesn't want to get fleeced in the trade. Nobody likes getting fleeced in the trade. Got that. But where Dal Morey, I think, always has issues with this, and our man Gerard Hector says this, and we'll probably talk about this with him a little bit more on NBA with Nuance on Wednesday, is that Dal Morey gets the people stuff wrong. He doesn't realize that there are people affected with it. He doesn't have to answer and talk to the media every day, but Doc Rivers does. Joel Embiid does. Tobias Harris does. Tyrese Maxey does. All these guys have to answer questions about Ben Simmons. No matter if they win or lose, how do you feel that Ben isn't here? What's wrong that Ben is not here? Do you think he's coming back? Do you still support him? When is he going to practice? Now, Ben Simmons did meet with the team on Friday, and he reportedly told officials that he is not mentally ready to play right now. And, you know, it's very interesting. He knows the vitriol that's coming for him if he did step on the court in Philadelphia in front of those fans. Oh, they're going to boo him. This is the town that boo Santa Claus. They are going to boo him for sure. He says he's not mentally ready. I just wonder with Simmons if what we've been seeing from him, the lack of willingness to improve, work on his game, it's just that he's been coddled all this time. And now some of these moves that he's been making to try to still get a check which he would have lost if he had been sitting at home and showing up to camp but not actually being part of the team. He's just hoping that things could work out with his agent, Rich Paul, and they can get him traded. But it hasn't worked out the way that he thought it was going to work out. So this is a mess. The thing to watch is, is Maury really about that life? Is he really in this for the long haul? It's not going to be four years. He's not going to do this for four years. We know it can't last that long. But I think when Maury talks about it lasting longer, He's talking about December 15th, folks. We have to watch that December 15th target for the Sixers and why that's important because that's the date when rookies can be traded, players who were signed in the offseason. That's the first day they're eligible to be traded. So that's a huge date where the Sixers could have a lot more options and a lot more flexibility in terms of a trade. But look, none of this talk has gone away for these two guys, Ben Simmons and Kyrie Irving, who are not playing for their teams? Are they hurting their teams? Yes. Is that going to change anytime soon? I don't know. I really don't know the answer to that. But it's crazy that in the first week of the NBA season, a lot of the talk has surrounded two guys, two stars in this league who are not playing for their teams. 